hi everyone. Uh, as you can see, the Tank Archives headquarters are still under renovation, but despite my somewhat bare shelves, I still have the content you crave. Today, I'm going to be talking about a rather persistent myth surrounding the T-34 tank, namely that it was designed to be expendable. Much like the tankers, the Red Army really didn't care about the lifespan of its T-34 tanks because, well, they weren't expected to survive a battle anyway. And if your tank gets damaged or knocked out or breaks on a march, who cares? Get another one. Uh, tens of thousands of them are coming out of the factory every day, so, you know, whatever. Uh, as you can imagine, with that kind of thinking, you're not really going to get any closer to winning a war. Um, and all of these claims that the T-34 was built to only last a couple of hours or a couple of weeks even, they are usually given without any concrete numbers. And so today we are going to talk about some concrete numbers uh, and we're going to compare them to some actual real life stats. Uh, I've struggled in choosing a baseline for what a reliable tank actually is and so I've settled on this meme Berlin to Warsaw in one tank. Uh, now in addition to being a funny meme that everyone's seen I think the 500 kilometer distance between Berlin and Warsaw is actually a pretty good approximation for a lot of the Red Army's strategic operations. And so uh, if your tank can survive 500 kilometers of marching, then it can be used for an entire offensive. And if it wears out by the end, well, you'll just get another one when your unit is pulled out to refit. No worries. All right, so let's take a look at whether or not the T-34 could actually make that 500 kilometer march. Well. The original T-34 prototypes, the A-20, um, that tank managed to drive for 4,200 kilometers over the course of its testing, but that was a lighter tank, it was a faster tank, the heavier T-34 was maybe a little bit less reliable. The original A-34 and then its successors were tested over the course of a 3,000 kilometer runtime, and so that was decided to be its warranty period and a bunch of tanks picked out for trials um, in October, December of 1940, confirmed that the T-34 can serve over a 3,000 uh, kilometer long journey before having to be pulled out for a refit. Uh, now, the 3,000 kilometer figure was the warranty period, so it wasn't the average life, it was the minimum life. You might ask, well, warranty period, wasn't the USSR communist and they had no money? Um, they actually did. So the USSR can't just snap its fingers and produce workers from nothing. It can't snap its fingers and produce resources from nothing. And so the economy part of the war economy was very, very important. If a tank did not meet its warranty requirements, the factory would not be paid for repairing it. If the factory is not paid for repairing it, it can't pay its workers, it can't buy resources, and if it goes out of business, nobody can produce tanks, and well, your country loses the war. So remember that the warranty period was very, very important and considered very, very seriously. Now you might think 3,000 kilometers, that's a really good good number. That's six times as much as the distance from Berlin to Warsaw. That's six strategic operations that a tank can take a part in before it has to be refitted. Um, the, this was not good enough for the Red Army. The Red Army didn't want an expendable tank. They wanted a tank that lasted for 7,000 kilometers. Now, the problem with that is that 7,000 kilometers is not an attainable figure for really any tank. You might see some one-off prototypes going through that amount of distance during uh, during trials, but these are one-off tanks that are very carefully controlled by a team of highly qualified engineers. Odds are they would be receiving uh, new engines, new parts throughout this, this experience, so it's not really possible for a production tank, um, and it was not possible until many years after the war for tanks in service to put out that kind of distance. But in the meantime, the Red Army had to be satisfied with 3,000 kilometers. This is where the problem arose. Um, even though the rest of the tank could drive over 3,000 kilometers, parts of it could not. For example, the track links. Uh, as I mentioned before in my video about T T-34 transmissions, the tracks were the weakest link, no pun intended. And so they could only be used for half of that lifespan for 1,500 kilometers. Now this is still quite a distance three distances between Berlin and Warsaw. 
However, this was not good enough for the Red Army, and after a lot of bickering and arguing between representatives of Factory 183 and Factory Management, they came to a compromise. Factory 183 would supply each T-34 tank with two sets of tracks until the tracks themselves were reliable enough to serve for the full 3,000 kilometer time limit. The next least reliable part of the tank was the wheels. Um, if you're driving very slowly in very, very favorable, favorable conditions, then sure, that T-34 doesn't need to replace its wheels until it goes out for refurbishment. But if you're really gunning it down um, some sandy or rocky soil in really hot weather, then the rubber on the rims actually starts to heat up and peel off, which is not great for your tank's longevity. Um, and so a new kind of rubber had to be developed and a new kind of design for these road wheel tires had to be developed that lasted for 2,000 kilometers. And again, the fact that they even needed wheels to last for 2,000 kilometers sort of suggests that there was a drive to improve the lifespan of the tank. Nobody was satisfied with a tank that could only be used over the course of one strategic offensive operation or a couple of hours of combat, uh, as, as is often claimed. The Red Army was really trying to get every single component of the T-34 to meet that 3,000 kilometer uh, warranty period. The next component is the gearbox. Now, unfortunately, I don't have um, a lot of good data on this. I only have data on the trials of the five-speed gearbox introduced in 1942. But as you can see, that gearbox lasted for 3,700 kilometers. So it is possible that the gearbox would outlive the rest of the tank. And when the tank was refitted and go into battle again, it wouldn't have to be replaced. Um, but uh, as you can see, the again, the Red Army was pushing for longer and longer lasting components, even if they weren't limiting reactants um, in the equation of the T-34's reliability. The lifespan of every single component was being gradually increased throughout the war. Now, this brings us to the engine. The engine is kind of an interesting thing since in Red Army convention, its lifespan was not measured in kilometers. It was measured in hours since if the engine is idling, it's still it's still being worn, uh, its components are still operating, uh, but obviously no kilometers are, are being added to the tank. Um, if you're driving through very slowly, through mud, through heavy soil, that's going to put a lot of pressure on the engine, but not really a lot of kilometers. Um, the tank's engine behaved the best when you were driving at high speed, just gunning it down the highway, but that's not really a situation that T-34 enjoyed very much. And so it was rather than kilometers, its lifespan was counted in hours. So when the army set its 7,000 kilometer figure for the distance that a tank should be able to drive before repairs, um, the amount of time it set for the engine to operate was 600 hours, which was, again, kind of impossible. At the time, in the same trials that set the T-34 uh, warranty period to 3,000 kilometers, the amount of engine hours a V2 was expected to put out was only 100 hours, one-sixth of that figure. By 1941, this figure could only be increased to 150 hours, far short of the Army's requirements. And even though those requirements were dropped to 250 hours, well the engine was still way short of meeting that. Problems were twofold. One was that the T-34 was still quite a rare tank. Commanders knew that the small number of T-34 tanks that they were issued was all they're going to get. If they take their T-34 and drive it around until the engine wears out, well, they're not going to get a replacement. And so Factory 75, the one that was responsible for producing the engines, had nothing they could study in order to figure out which parts of the engine were down the fastest and how they can be reinforced. The other problem was when the war broke out, production had to be scaled up. And when you have to scale up production, you can't really focus on quality of individual components. You at best can maintain existing quality while just producing more of them. And so you can really see that the growth in lifespan of the V2 slowed down, uh, despite the army maintaining that 250 kilo, um, hours was the required lifespan. The V2 only reached that by 1945. It was a kind of a gradual climb to 200 hours by 1944 and 250 1945. 
interestingly enough, as the engine's reliability improved, reports that other components were insufficiently reliable increased. Uh, now, this wasn't because the quality of the clutches or um, the, the gearboxes or anything was slipping. It was because the engine was running for long enough that defects in those components or wear in those components became much more apparent. Um, and may I remind you, the 250-hour uh, figure is, again, just the warranty period. There were many, many tankers uh, who, thanks to careful driving and timely preventive maintenance, managed to get much, much further past that number. The longest I've seen um, in an award order was 370 hours, uh, but many instances of um, over 300 hours uh, have been recorded. And even in 1944, there are records saying that the typical T-34 can be used for between 250 and 300 hours of driving before the engine has to be replaced. So as you can see, the 3,000 kilometer figure for a T-34 tank outside of combat is hardly unattainable. Uh, the reliability of all the tank's components increased throughout the war, uh, and you could, the Red Army was really quite concerned with getting very high quality tanks to its tankers so they could actually, you know, win battles and by the end of the war a single tank could participate in multiple offenses back to back without needing to be taken out of service to be refurbished uh, but let's take a, a look at a very specific example of these tanks operating in very grueling conditions the offensive through manchuria in the soviet japanese war of 1945 otherwise known as operation august storm pitted t-34 tanks against the probably roughest terrain encountered in the entire war. In order to surprise the Japanese, the T-34 tanks had to cross the Gobi Desert and the Greater Hingan Mountain Range, uh, encountering both the blazing sun, scorching sands, uh, the monsoons, very deep mud, and of course all the challenges that come with driving a 30-ton armored vehicle through the mountains. Now, in order to, for the operation to be a surprise, they had to do it in record time. There was absolutely not enough time to perform the preventative maintenance prescribed by field manuals. And this was not a very short journey. Uh, these tanks would be covering a distance of about 1,500 kilometers, so not exactly the full lifespan of a T-34 tank, but cons fairly considerable march in very dangerous terrain. Um, and the reason why this operation is a very good benchmark of the T-34's reliability is because the Red Army was using Sherman tanks in the same campaign. Now, the Sherman tank has a reputation for very high reliability, and all of the Sherman tanks that were arriving were pretty much brand new, including the latest um, Shermans with HVSS suspension. And so, in this march through Manchuria, through the most difficult terrain that a tanker could probably face without water without uh, sufficient time to conduct maintenance, 87% of T-34 tanks made it to the destination. Uh, most of these exhibited fairly minor faults. Only one of them had to be taken for major repairs, which is something that required the replacement of major components such as the engine. Now, when it came to the Shermans going through exactly the same march, exactly the same conditions, exactly the same amount of them made it to the end. 87%. And just as with the T-34, only one Sherman required major repairs. So as you can see, when operated in the same terrain, with the same quality of drivers, with the same conditions regarding maintenance and operation, the T-34 is about on par with the Sherman tank in terms of reliability. When used correctly, the T-34 worked for a very, very long time. It was never considered a disposable tank and the Red Army constantly fought to improve the quality of its tanks and improve their lifespan on the battlefield.